So we're part of a nationwide network of nonprofit tech clubs. Um, and uh, we have been very fortunate to have a great partnership with TechSoup. And uh, that allows us to keep this programming free to everybody, together with all the hard work that's done by our fearless leader, Carolyn Appleton. So um, we do invite people to reach out to us, join us on Facebook if you haven't already to, to stay in touch with technology and tools. We have monthly programming. It's always on the first Monday of the month, come hell or high water. And I'm going to be actually the presenter leader of our next month's meeting in October when we're going to have a technology roundtable. We did one of these last year. This year we'll be doing the same thing, basically sharing our favorite technology tools with each other. What technology has helped you over the past year? And you know, so hopefully you come with uh, something that you've learned over the past year or two and also come to learn about the new technology tools that have come online. And so what else do we have here in our slide deck that Carolyn put together for us? Oh, for those of you who didn't know, we are in the process of bringing the Texas chapters together under one big Texas roof. So it will be bigger and better. I believe that's gonna become official towards the end of the year, but it's in progress and we're looking forward to even bigger and better things. And of course, this is all possible due to a bunch of volunteers. And so certainly Carolyn Appleton, our fearless leader, Susanna Erler, myself, Nevin Kamath, Carly Martin, Dale Thompson, and Carl Webb. And so thank you everybody who is a part of the organizing for us, uh, including uh, Eli up in uh, Vancouver, who helps us out with the technology through TechSoup. And of course, we're very grateful to Capital Factory because they've been a sponsor for us for a number of years. And uh, they used to host us pre-COVID and uh, hopefully they'll let us hang out with them again once we get past this pandemic. And of course, folks, you can find us online through TechSoup, through our Facebook group. And so please do get connected in those ways if you're not already. And that is that, so I'm gonna stop the sharing and introduce our presenters. Before I do that, of course, I want to remind people, please stay on mute um, until we get to the question and answer section at the end. In the meantime, if you have a question that you is timely or you don't want to forget or for whatever reason, please drop it into the chat box. And so Jake is going to, Jake Schifrin is going to be keeping an eye on the chat box. And if it's something where he thinks it makes sense to stop the presentation, he'll hit pause on the presentation, we'll, we'll handle the question then. Otherwise, he'll save those up and feed those to our, our main presenter, John, at the end. So let me tell you about Jake and John and the organization that they come from, Integra Tech. So I've known Integra Tech for about 10 years now. I brought them in when I was serving a nonprofit and we really came to realize that kind of this you know DIY thing with uh, in-house technology was not doing the job. In fact, it was kind of dangerous. Um, and so even though I had some technical capability, and even though we had a couple of volunteers who were outstanding, like one of them was a big wig in technology over at Whole Foods, another one was a big wig in technology over at Dell, but just they really couldn't stay on top of the day-to-day. -day. And the need for having an outsourced uh, managed technology solution, like an Integratech, I think it's gotten even bigger in the last few years, because if you're doing it DIY, how are, and it's, you know, somebody who's also answering the phones and doing a dozen other things for your organization, they really can't stay on top of things like security, on top of things like Office 365, like we're gonna see tonight where our presenter, John, he spent years and years acquainting himself with this, this tool so that he can really bring out all of the cool things that it does. Um, so, if you are a nonprofit that has a budget under $10 million, I would certainly encourage you to look at managed technology to make sure that you are getting the work done right, rather than just wing it. And especially with all the cyber risk that's out there these days, it's good to have somebody covering your back. And so, I, and I've known Integratech to do that a great job. I brought them into two different employers of mine. Um, they do hardware setup and repair, internet connections and bandwidth, cybersecurity, telephones, a whole bunch of other stuff. We were pretty shameless about throwing questions at them for all kinds of crazy technology things. And they did a great job of helping us out with it so that the staff could focus on doing their job and not fixing their computers or their neighbor's computers 
or figuring out how to do stuff with the technology. We just pushed it all to Integratech and they, they took it with a smile. So, and they have a deep bench of experts. And so there's, there are people who know risk. There are people who know how to set up the hardware. There are people who know the software. Let me tell you about Jake. He's watching the, the chat for us today. Um, and he is in the sales and marketing department over at Integratech. And uh, so if you are have been considering managed IT, I would certainly encourage you to reach out to him. Jake, if you haven't already, please drop contact information into the uh, the chat for yourself and for John. And he's just a, a nice guy and he, you know, it's his job to take people's calls and help them understand what managed IT can do for them. So give him a shot if you've been thinking about this at all. Our main presenter tonight, John Adams, he's a surfer, but when he's not a surfer and when he's not a guitar player, he's part of the team of experts over at Integra Tech. And one of his passions is Office 365, which is why we brought him here tonight, because Office 365, it's a really cool tool. And we want everybody to be able to see all the cool things it can do to get a real taste for that and or do a little bit of troubleshooting if it's been, you know, you've been wondering, well, they told me it would make a cappuccino and why doesn't it make a cappuccino? What, what button do I need to push? So he's our um, Office 365 expert. Um, and one of the things that I really like about John that I harvested from his bio and it really jumped out at me because it's one of my passions too, is taking technical information and translating that into a form that non-technical people can understand, right? That's a key thing when you're working with any kind of organization, whether it's a nonprofit or any other, right? Having somebody who can be that bridge between the technical people who only speak technical and the regular human beings who do not speak any of that. And that's one of John's passions. He understands that it's very important to be able to, for everybody to be able to interface with the technology and have a meaningful conversation with the folks so that the goals can get met. So without any more uh, introduction for me, I'm gonna go ahead and go on mute. And uh, John, it's your show now. Thank you for joining us tonight. Awesome, I wanna thank you guys all for having me here. Um, I'm glad that y'all uh, we're able to come out here at this time, even though I know it's Labor Day. We got some exciting stuff to talk about. Um, first off, uh, we're Integra Tech. We're a managed service provider who's headquartered in Texas, uh, Austin, and um, we love Microsoft. Um, we've been moving clients into Microsoft. Um, it's it's our bread and butter now, making use of 365. And as <clears throat> As someone who understands the technology and the other parts of it, it, it the, the service actually just sells itself. So let me start just digging into it and how it makes sense for a nonprofit. So first off, if you're working with Microsoft, Microsoft loves nonprofits. They themselves uh, spent $1.4 billion last year um, in giving discounts and credits to nonprofits. So I know you guys as nonprofits like giving, Microsoft also likes to give. So I wanted to get that off. Um, the bat. So <clears throat> one of the savings that you'll get with Microsoft 365 is Office 365 functionality. So I'm going to hit on those things first because that's going to cover most of uh, most of the normal use cases that people have. Um, and the, one of the ways that Microsoft um, supports nonprofits is it offers its in, it's a basic license free up to 300 users. So this license gives you an exchange mailbox, a mailbox that we all know, but it gives you so much more. So inside that mailbox, you can have, you know, unlimited archiving. It's a very smart mailbox. Um, you know, it can share between multiple locations. And I think actually one of the things I wanna hit on here when it comes to Microsoft 365 is you're moving yourself into a modern technology. Um, a lot of people are still in that mindset of they have their servers in their office and it does this, um, but the whole world isn't doing that anymore and it's moving towards these cloud solutions. Um, that's why I was saying the technology in an engineer's mind sells itself because it sounds so great. Um, and one of the reasons is right off the bat for 300 users, you can give them a mailbox, you can give them access to Excel, Word, PowerPoint through a web browser. Um, immediately that user gets one terabyte of personal storage in their OneDrive account. And I want to just hit on OneDrive real quick because most of the time people are just assuming, oh, it's just, you know, it's just like a box drive or something. It's just a simple storage drive, but it actually has the ability to do so much more. 
And one of the great features of it is it can automatically keep your documents, downloads, and desktops backed up to your computer. Um, excuse me, backed up to uh, the cloud. So how great is that, right? So say you're out on a fishing trip and you brought your laptop because you wanted to work while you were fishing and uh, you know you knocked it over and your computer is gone, right? You dropped it in the ocean. Um, it's not the end of the world. We've had OneDrive constantly looking at your system for changes and syncing them up to the cloud. Um, so it's very simple. We just get you a new system. We log you into the new, to Microsoft 365. It's gonna start syncing your files down to your computer. All right, since you already have your email, that's an exchange online, right? There's nothing lost there. So we'll just add the email back on there. And, you know, that's a very big efficiency that we can capture. Um, and then just security of our data. And then another great thing that kind of goes in pair with OneDrive is SharePoint. So we think of OneDrive as this cloud storage system that we can share from, we can use it for backup, we can use it for storage. And then SharePoint, you want to think of it as your company's file server. So I'm sure all of us have at one point in time had a file server at their company where they would access it through the Windows Explorer as a Z drive or SharePoint is very similar to that. Um, and that experience that everyone has with a standard file server um, is easily transitioned into SharePoint. So those Z drives that you used to click on will now just have a SharePoint logo on it with the company name and the file structure can be the same. Now, <clears throat> what's the difference between the regular file server and SharePoint? Well, there's a lot of big differences. Um, one of them is, you know, we can capture every action that happens on SharePoint. Um, so since it's in cloud, right, and we're managing it from Microsoft, we can see, you know, any changes that happen in those files. So, um, you know, maybe Becky creates a file, then Jenny makes some changes, and Erica deleted you know, Becky's changes on there. So we would have three versions of that file and we can have up to 50 versions of a file so that at any point in time, we can go back to it and we can look and see who made those changes, when they were made. We can even see what system they made them from. Um, so <clears throat> when you think about that type of auditing and uh, logging of all these things in 365, it's a really great feature. So SharePoint, right off the bat, you're gonna get one terabyte of your company's storage. So each individual user gets their own terabyte of data and then the SharePoint uh, site will get one terabyte off the bat and then add uh, data depending on how many licenses you have. So those are three great ones. And then we have Teams. So again, this is the basic license that's free up to 300 users. You can use Teams. I'm sure some of you guys have already been using them. Um, that's a great way to video chat, to uh, host webinars, to host video calls. Um, you can actually get a number to have people call in um, if they need to call in on a cell phone into a conference group. So Teams is an incredible app, and we could spend hours just talking about that because the Teams app actually includes access to your OneDrive, to your SharePoint. So inside one app, you can instant message, you can communicate, you can share files, you can access your personal files, you can access your company's files, um, and you're able to do it from anywhere that you log in with Teams. So the one downside with Microsoft 365 Business Basic is it does not contain desktop apps, but you can still access um, Word, Excel, uh, files through the web. So I'm going to show you guys that in a little bit. I'm going to scoot on now to the business standard license. So this one is $3 a month for nonprofits. Normally it's $12.50. So that's a pretty good discount on there. And it comes with the same features that the basic license has. However, this time it includes desktop apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So that means when you have it on your system and you see the green little Excel logo and you click on it, it loads the program um, on your system. Now, to piggy that back with what we were talking about, keeping everything synchronized with the cloud, is um, you will be able to um, access all that data that's in OneDrive or SharePoint from Word, from Excel, from PowerPoint. So once all that data is in the cloud, whether it's your email, your company files, your personal files, since Microsoft has so many solutions, we can have them all you know, come into this one user account, which is great. 
So um, moving on, the other one that's great is Microsoft Business Premium. Now this one is pretty cool because for $5 a month, a regular $20 a month price per user, you get all the stuff that we just talked about, but then you start to get some really cool features. Um, and one of those great features is Microsoft Defender for Office 365 plan. So you know how we're used to normally having regular spam protection, um, that just get rid of spam and each basic uh, 365 account comes with exchange online protection. Um, <clears throat> but this Microsoft Defender for Office 365 plan is uh, includes kind of that next generation protection. So we're talking about impersonation protection, people trying to be your CEO in order to get something done. We can do extra scans to make sure that you know, it validates that that's actually coming from your boss. And we'll do that with AI by looking at the way they write. You know, if the style of writing has changed, um, it might flag it as, hey, this could possibly be impersonation. It has a great feature that does safe links, which means say you get a phishing email and it makes it past the filters and you click on that link. Now, normally you would open it immediately on your computer and what happens would happen. Um, but with this safe links, it'll actually open it up in a virtual machine in Microsoft's platform, make sure that it actually isn't doing anything wrong. And if it is, it's going to tell you again, hey, again, we really don't think this is a, is a great thing to click on. Are you sure you want to do it? And so that'll be a couple red flags that should hopefully deter you. And as the administrators, we can control what we want. So if it is something that has a high risk score, you know, you could remove it from being allowed. The other thing I want to talk about, I don't want to get too complex into it, is Intune. With this business premium license, you get Intune. And that's basically a mobile device manager and a mobile application manager. And what I mean by that is you can actually control um, those devices. So for some of you guys that might have, you know, certain events where you have, you know, cell phones out and they need to have a specific app that is you know, only specific to your company, you can control what that cell phone can download and you can automatically, you know, install that application and set it up how you want. So I want you to think about, I don't want to spend too much time, but it's just a way that you can really manage all of those devices. So it's great in the sense that, um, you know, that laptop that we lost in the ocean uh, that had, you know, some stuff on there. Once we kind of move all this stuff into the cloud, we can say, okay, this is your new computer, right? You downloaded all your files, but now we're going to deploy all these applications from the company and set you right back up to where it is. Um, another part of Intune, not to spend too much time on, is conditional access. I wanted to bring it up because it is really cool. Um, it allows you to block um, or allow specific types of access. So you can say, you know, if somebody tries to log into Jake's computer that's outside of the US, do not allow it. Um, if Jake is on a sensitive document and he tries to copy and paste that data in order to do something, we can say, no, you can't, can't allow that. Um, and of course, you can delegate that permission to multiple people. So perhaps your executives have some good access, um, but maybe some of your um, regular workers, maybe they, you know, don't have as much access. And the other great thing about Microsoft 365 Business Premium is message encryption, right? We should be using that technology when we're sending, you know, our employees, our clients data through email. Um, and this is just a great feature. Uh, it should be used more. Not only can you encrypt the message, but you can also have the message um, not be, excuse me, not be forwarded to other recipients. So you can kind of control the security of it a lot more. So those are the three plans I want to hit on that give you some huge discounts from Microsoft, um, making use of their great tools. So initially, um, they had their own set of tools. And I want you to know that Microsoft has continually made this better and better and better. So um, we see great success with companies that we've moved over to this cloud. Um, and it's really fit well with our model of moving our clients forward, uh, protecting them better. And um, by protecting, uh, by giving them a better product, um, we're doing right by our clients. 
So our main goal is to do what's right for the clients um, and then the rest will fall into place. So those are three licenses and hit on some of the <clears throat> features that each license gets. So I wanna talk about it from an administration point of view. So once you have your systems, your files, um, your processes into Microsoft 365, now we have them in this one area where we're able to really control what happens to it. And uh, one of the cool things we can do is some of this data loss prevention policies. Now, just a second ago, when we talked about message encryption, we talked about how it's not good to send, you know, sensitive information to general email addresses. Um, so what this can do is you can actually put in policies that say, you know, if an email was sent that contains a social security number, it won't allow it, or it'll alert you and it'll say, you know, this is unsafe. If it contains a passport ID, if it contains any type of sensitive information, whether it's your clients, employees, your information, it's gonna, it's gonna let you know that, hey, this isn't the most secure option. And in today's threat landscape and the world we live in, security is, you know, on everyone's mind. So, and customer information, client information is very valuable in some of these locations. So keeping it in check and protected is a wise decision for your company and you know, your clients. Um, another great thing is audit logs. I had mentioned this earlier, but when you have all of your systems and your processes inside 365, we can capture, and by we, I mean you know, your management, um, who might need to see some of these informations uh, if something does come up. So that would be auditing, <clears throat> you know, if somebody accessed a file, if they deleted a file, um, you could see, um, you know, anything that you would need to. So was this email read? We can see that the email is read. We can see that all of a sudden, you know, a user can't get in. She says there's, you know, she tried her password. It's the same password. It should have worked. You know, we can see, okay, she failed these many times we know that it's a password. So when it comes to managing it and um, being efficient for the client, um, you know, these types of tools are really great from our perspective because we can pinpoint the problem and we can take care of it. So another great thing about 365 and having everything inside this one cloud is identity management. So going back to that security system, uh, security issues that we talked about, you know, having one login that you can use for all these services inside this one place, um, then we can protect it, right? We can add two factor onto it. We can add um, extra layers of security um, that protect your identity. So not only are you getting all these great benefits of the cloud with its versioning and all these sharing and backup, uh, you're also getting a very secure environment. So, <clears throat> and then the other thing I mentioned earlier is that same laptop, excuse me, Sorry about that. That same laptop that uh, we dropped off the boat when we were fishing. Um, again, now that everything's in the cloud, we have our policies, we have your files all stored there. Um, we can instantly provision that new system. Technically, uh, the person who dropped that laptop could go to the store, they could log in and they would have their email, they would have their files. Um, so it's fantastic for that. And again, the information in one place is easy to secure, easy for us to monitor, for you guys to monitor. Um, you know, it just gives the, you know, it just leaves us open to so much more once we actually get in this uh, cloud. And going back to the point about kind of this legacy mindset and the legacy in infrastructure is once we actually do get into the cloud, you know, now we're playing on the current technology field. We're using current tools. We're using modern solutions. Um, and then we're headed in the right direction. So I just want to touch on this one just for a quick second. Um, so Azure is the uh, cloud of Microsoft, right? So Office 365 is part of Azure. So as a nonprofit, you can get $3,500 a year Azure credit for qualified nonprofits. And so I only want to talk about one part, a uh, couple parts of Azure here. So a lot of people have physical infrastructure. They have servers in their um, environment. They have some backups. You know, they have all this physical stuff. Um, what we like to do at Integratech now is look to move that stuff into this virtual environment. So again, once we have your physical server up into the cloud and it's virtual, 
we can back it up quicker. We can, you know, copy it to different sections of the globe if we want some redundancy to it. Um, it's very easy for us to upgrade, downgrade. And one of the great features is, is, you know, you pay for what you use. So some people are buying servers for five, $6,000 to put a few VMs on them. When uh, we've run some assessments, we see that, you know, maybe that server costs $38 a month um, to host it in Azure. And basically, I like to think of Azure as almost just Microsoft's data center, um, but it's all just virtual. So if you want to easily understand Azure, you can think about, excuse me, the infrastructure in that, in that light. Um, and then it has some great connections to just connect your office to it, just like it was a remote office. Uh, the disaster recovery, like I mentioned, is great. Um, very easy for us to revert if there are any problems. You know, there's no more if a server does go down and we do need to back it up. Um, previously, we'd have to move some of the back of files. We'd have to create space. Um, now we can just click a few buttons and it takes about, 50, you know, depending on the size of it, it takes much less time. So. I just want to touch on that a little bit. Um, we're very excited about that from Integra Tech because we've been finding a lot of our clients' savings. Um, and then with those savings, they're getting so many more features. They're being put on this modern technology playing field, and that allows them to do all sorts of stuff. So uh, <clears throat> I wanted to now just kind of show a couple of things that have to do with 365. Um, I know that email, stuff like that is, is pretty common. Uh, everyone knows that you're probably already using it. Some of the Teams functions, you guys are already using it as instant messaging. But one of the great features in Microsoft that I think gets overlooked a lot is um, the collaboration aspect of it. So <clears throat> let me go through this here with y'all. So I've created just a basic document here regarding the Kings of the Arctic wal walruses. And I wanna show you how I can be working on this document right now. And I'm gonna share this document to a test user of mine. And then we're both gonna be inside the uh, document. And then I wanna show you some cool stuff we can do once we're in there. So I'm gonna share this to this guy, IW test one. This is just one of our test accounts. Right. So now I'm going to go over here to this guy's account. Hopefully, we get the message here in just a second. All right. So I had I didn't have to go. I didn't have to create a new email because I want uh, Jerry to look at this. I can send it to him right from here, and then the recipient can take this, especially if they're in your organization. They can say, "Okay, cool. Let me see what's going on." So now we have this guy in the same file here with us. And we can see right up here that someone's joined the file. It's this guest contributor guy, he's here right now. So what's cool I wanna show you is we can both be working on this at the same time when we're on the phone and we can make changes that are you know, completed on both sides. So say our guest guy says, uh, walrus is... Uh, excellent at sunbathing, how about that? Right, so we can immediately see, these are two totally separate accounts, but we can see the changes that this guest contributor made. So then sunbathing, um, uh, we can also say, and then if we make changes, they are uh, loafs, right? So now our guest contributor can see that as well. And then you can also see where you are at these locations. So I can see on this guy that the guest contributor is right here. His cursor is right here. Now what's cool, now that we know that we can actually collaborate, um, it makes sense. Um, and again, we can collaborate with multiple people. So you can sometimes have five people in one document making changes. Um, <clears throat> And I wanted to show you this other part right here, the review. So if we start to track, track changes, then we can actually get a history of all the changes that happen with this file. So we can see this was made here. You see how it's gonna make it red now? So over here, we can say this is something different. 
And now it's going to start being able to track these changes. So now we're going to keep a log of every change that was made and we can color code them if we want to. And another great use case for this um, that I use a lot is when we create Excel documents for some of our projects and how they run um, and say it's, you know, a few engineers that are working off one project. Um, basically that Excel document is created. Uh, you know, you create your rows and we use colors a lot to show when a task is complete. So we'll have four, five people in a document and you can see exactly where they're working on, what tasks they have completed. So, um, you know, for an event, something like that, um, to have multiple people in the document, instead of sending that information through email to everyone and they have to look at this new up, you know, this new document, um, we can just give them access to the document. And now we're all in this document that can be updated, can be changed. And of course, we can, we can tell people they can't make changes or they can only make comments, right? So if they see something that's, that they wanna change, they say, this is wrong, right? They're thought to be around 50,000. Um, you know, they can actually just leave a note here that says, change this to 50K. Um, so then we can see, you know, we can get more collaboration in here, um, even if we don't want them to actually touch the document. So that was a real quick thing on how we shared it. I want to show you one other thing when it comes to sharing it too, um, because again, people are so used to just copying the file into email and going back and forth. And if we share it right here, you think, well, who has this information? Um, but you have the ability to change who has this type of information. So here we can change that. We only want people inside this company to be able to, to view these files and allow them to edit. Um, or we can say it's specific people. It might be, you know, people that are outside of your organization, um, you know, whoever. And then you have the option here, which is anyone with the link. So you think this kind of sounds a little bit insecure, but it does give you some features to allow you to uh, make use of this public link and hopefully not get too much in return. So what we can do is we can turn off editing. We can also say, hey, this, this file is gonna expire in one week. So that means that this link to get to this document will no longer exist. Um, and then here we have uh, the ability to block download. So even when they get to this link, they cannot actually uh, download the file. So. Um, I just want to touch on a few things that um, I thought were really cool. And, you know, we could have uh, these, these, these demonstrations every week till the end of the year. And um, we could keep on coming out with, with new cool, uh, cool tools that are better for your business. And I touched on this um, as us, as a company, um, you know, our, our new mindset is very focused into cloud and we're going in that direction because we believe it is the best option for our clients. And we weighed all the options of Google and AWS and Microsoft. And for the users that are already familiar with Office, um, already familiar with the apps, you know, the formatting and stuff, this is just a no brainer. It's such an easy transition. Uh, in the long run, you're gonna gain so much security um, you're going to gain so much functionality and our goal is to make you guys work better. So when it comes to the IT stuff, we can handle that stuff. Of course, we can help with the printers and when systems are broken and everything, but our goal is to set you guys up on a platform to where you guys work efficiently and then we work efficiently as well. So, um, Microsoft 365 has been a great, great tool. Um, it's on the forefront of so many changes. Um, and once you get into this environment, then we can really start to maximize security and control, um, really protect your data and make you guys more efficient. So um, <clears throat> that is, uh, that's pretty much it. I wanted to go through a few of these things. I don't wanna take up too much time um, from Jake. So uh, if you guys have any questions or anything about what we just went over, or if there's any questions in general I can help you all with, please let me know. I didn't see any uh, questions come through the chat. Uh, did anybody here on the call have any specific questions or anything they've been dealing with with any of the applications within Office 365 that they wanted to talk about?
Well, while people are formulating their questions, I'll pop in with one really quick. Um, John, thank you mm -hmm. for the uh, the presentation. I, I learned a lot, even though I've used Office 365 for a number of years. Um, one of the cool features that um, I like, and may, maybe you could show really quickly, is the um, the kind of the audit trail where you can see, you know, who was in the document when. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up an example from one of our SharePoint sites on my other screen here and bring it over to you guys. And one of the questions that just popped up is, is Outlook linked with Office 365? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So you're going to get the Outlook version on the web, which I can show you right now, is this. It's going to be a standard um, inbox. Uh, that would you could access from anywhere. So it, since it's in the cloud, you can access it from your phone's Outlook. They have an app for that, the web Outlook. And then if you get the premium option, you can access it from the Outlook app, excuse me, the Outlook app that's actually on your computer. So yes. Okay, cool. Let me show you guys um, some of the file access stuff. A couple more questions popping up as you're doing that. Um, one was, are there any security issues? I didn't know if that was too broad or not specific enough to answer. Yes. So, um, of course, you know, there are security issues in, in everything, right? But I think what's great about this is, um, again, this is current technology that's always being worked on, always has um, changes. And What's great about this, instead of having one system that has, you know, uh, some technicians supported a few people, when there's an issue here, you have the entire Microsoft company working on it. So as bright as some of us can be at this, um, I feel great knowing that, you know, the, if, if something does happen, um, it's in the hands of a pretty large, very smart company. And um, when it comes to the security of it, Again, going back to some of that auditing that we can do, um, we can really get alerts when there is weird behavior. So I think it's much more secure um, because we're able to use multi-factor authentication for this, and we're also able to control it. So if somebody did steal your laptop and you worried that they had all this information on there and they were going to get it, we could remotely wipe that laptop. So it gives us a lot of these tools to address security um, that are modern. And when it comes to security for uh, like your email uh, and some of your OneDrive and SharePoint files, um, it provides such a great service. Uh, like the safe links I talked about, the anti-malware, um, not only does it check it on your email coming in and out, but it also gives you security inside your OneDrive and SharePoint. So that means in the crazy situation that someone came to your computer and they put some ransomware on it and they started to run it, um, you know, you would be, uh, we, we could be alerted of that. So um, it, we could stop something like that from happening. So I think on the security aspect, all the technology is new, it's current, it's modern solutions, next gen solutions for modern threats. Um, I think it's very secure. As you're looking for that audit trail, another one that came up was um, how to send delayed emails, which is something I know that I've used in the past. You know, you'll often be sending out an email and right as you push send, you notice that there was a mistake or you forgot to include someone or forgot to include an attachment. And that's really a, a quick fix in the settings tab. You just go to compose and reply and there's an option to undo send and you can you know, set how many seconds you want to pass before it's kind of processed that email or not. And I'll also put that in the chat too, so you can have it written down. Yeah, going back to, you know, these modern solutions, um, that's another great one. You know, being able to delay, you could put a delay of 60 seconds, 30 seconds, five seconds to say, you know, if you fall into that problem a lot, we're often sending things. And then immediately after you send it, you realize, oh, shoot, you know, I wanted to change this. Um, you could set it to a minute. So... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to grab a file here that is touched by multiple people here so we can see a full version of it. Um, 
I cannot find one right off the bat. So I'm going to just show you this one right here. Um, it's just my own version history of it. But you can see here, and this would happen for anybody that would be in that file. So we can see, you know, on the ninth at eight. So it's going to take every time um, that there's been a significant change to the file. And just another bonus on this is, I think we touched on this already, is that these files auto save. So when I have a file that's inside Excel that I'm working on and I've saved it to my OneDrive or SharePoint location, it is saving actively the entire time. There's no need to click save or did I save. It's constantly taking saves of that file um, so that if the power went out or something happened, you know, that file has been saved and is constantly being synced into the cloud. And, um, you know, since we have a little bit more time and we're already logged into here on that business license, I mentioned to you guys that you guys get um, a cloud version of some of these apps that we've always used. So I want to just show you this. Um, this is Word, how it would look like in the cloud, right? And again, this is a free license. So this is very easy when you have seasonal help or you have um, employees that come and go a lot. Um, it's very easy to give them a web version of this. And you know, you don't have to make that huge expense up front. If you if unfortunately the employee only stays for you know a few months, um, we can remove that license. So you only paid for three months. You didn't pay for the full piece of software that you might pay a hundred something dollars for. So the ability to be agile and 365, I think is a really great thing too. Um, you can get up, you know, if you have 60 employees and then all of a sudden you go down to 10 employees, um, no problem. You're not on the hook for buying all those uh, 60 users. Um, we can just stop the subscription. So, you know, we just wouldn't pay for them for the next month. Um, so it's a month by month payment system. So it's really easy to add and remove employees, especially if you have an event where you have 20 new staff that are going to be helping you for this event. Um, Right, we can create them 20 email addresses. They can all log in from their phone, from their web browser, and be able to do the majority of the tasks they might need. Um, Word, just like Excel, it's you know very similar. It's just inside of a web web browser, but we can do all the same functions that we uh, that we normally are used to. We can share it from here. We can do all of our stuff that we just went over. Um, and then we can actually uh, just open it up in a desktop app. So you got to think that all this stuff integrates so well. And if you're using Windows computers, um, of course, it's going to natively integrate well with Office 365. So again, going back to having everything on this one platform, this one platform that is very redundant, very resilient, um, that spans the whole earth. Um, it's, it's again, it, it just works really well. So for, you know, all businesses, not just nonprofits, um, it just makes sense. Uh, as technology is going faster, um, you need to move to a platform that actually is moving with technology and has the ability to protect you guys from some of the more modern threats. And um, another just easy thing, there's, there's so much to all of the applications within the Office 365 suite. But um, another cool thing you can do related to emails inside of Outlook is if you're composing an email, let's say you were you know, creating something right now after hours or a little later tonight, you don't want to bother someone sending that through. Just by clicking the downwards arrow on the send button, you can have an option to send it later. So you could you know, set that to send at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 10 a.m. or wherever you want to, to send out at a later time. So I think the way that we as a managed service provider, you know, work with our clients is we try to understand, you know, what their processes are, what their policies are. And then we try to guide them to utilizing um, a lot of the things that they're paying for, or in this sense, not really paying for because it's free and how they can become more efficient as an organization. So a lot of it is just helping these teams understand, Hey, you know, you have these applications like SharePoint or OneDrive um, or even teams and, you know, you're paying for these other tools, like maybe box you're, you're currently paying for box and, if you were to be use, utilizing some of these applications that you already have, you wouldn't even have to be paying for these other tools. So it's really just a, you know, a discovery phase and learning about you know, organizations and how they, how they work, who they interact with, how their teams interact, 
what information should be shared within the team or shouldn't be shared and us guiding them through the, the certain steps to utilizing everything within Office 365. Yeah, do you guys have any other questions? Carl, you got any questions? Nicole? Carl, no questions, all right. <laughs> John, you mentioned earlier that um, Azure could yep. work as a, as a server and it got me thinking about a, a client of mine who's has a couple of applications that they're writing on a server, which I think is in their closet or something like that. Am I right in thinking that they could take QuickBooks, which is one of these applications, off of that server in the closet and put it on Azure and actually access it remotely? Is that yes, a they use could case? Do that. Yep, okay. they could do that. Great, and how, if they're not already on Office 365, how do they get the nonprofit discount? Is that through TechSoup or is that some other route? Yes, TechSoup can get you guys there. Um, and then also, of course, most of your managed service providers should be able to get you through there as well. But I would go to TechSoup. Okay, but that's right. That's even better if you have a managed service provider. Then you can just tell them, take care of this for me, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And then you get everything, all your subscriptions, your service, your everything just on one bill. So again, we're bringing it all into one location. Easy for manage, easy for administration, easy for billing, easy for the client. Is there a tutorial? Um, there is there is a lot of information. Um, you know, each one of these apps is very feature rich. So what type of tutorial are you looking for, Carl? I guess, you know, how sometimes you go to a, a new application and it has just like a basic overview, you know, you click on one box and it tells you what this, this function is for and then it pops here and tell you, you know, kind of like an overview. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of information that's online for it. Um, and then also as nonprofits, um, when you guys become eligible through Microsoft, they do have extra training that they offer for nonprofits for free. Um, so they could actually, you could get a little bit more of those in-depth guides, um, training some of their webinars, you guys will qualify for that. And um, I think they hit a lot of those applications. So you could spend a couple hours on each one of them. But um, if you're looking for some general information, I can drop it in the chat for you. Okay, cool. And uh, Sean just posted an answer into the chat about where you can find this recording. Um, it's going to be a little later date, though. Yeah, I'm going to find the link for our Facebook page for anybody that doesn't have it. Oh, but it's going to be on YouTube also. And I think, uh, you know, the thing to take into account here is just how much information is shared within the suite of applications. You shouldn't just, you know, try to overwhelm yourself taking it all at once. You know, you can focus on one application at a time. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with some of the more um, fundamental ones like, you know, Office or Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or Excel, uh, something that's been around for, you know, years and years. But like I said, there's a lot of these other ones that uh, you can start to slowly become more knowledgeable about, such as you know OneNote. Um, it's just things that create a lot more efficiency within your organization um, in terms of communicating with your team. You know, like John mentioned and showed some examples of before. But um, there's a lot of documentation that you can put together, and it just, like I said, it really helps out with your efficiency. I myself was new to it a while back and started learning these new tools. And the collaboration I was able to have with my team just you know, exponentially increased. So um, like I said, I think it's something you, you take slow steps towards learning. And then some of it you might find, you might come to the realization that you know, I don't really need this so much, so I don't need to put too much focus in it, while other applications can be very beneficial to your organization. And it's just a matter of understanding which one does what and how you can utilize them. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point because inside of 365, we've hit a few of these things, but these licenses give you so many features um, that it would take so long for us to, to go through them. Um, but we've hit the core ones. And again, you're putting your company and yourself into this modern environment. So once you're in there, all these features and possibilities um, are possible. Uh, as a company, we like to think for our clients, not just right now, what are your issues, but where's your business going in the next two, three, five years? Um, and then we can kind of develop a plan uh, that makes the best use out of your environment, your tools, um, and your platform. So Microsoft has been great for that. Um, and I did share both my contact information and John's at the start of this chat. Um, so if you need anything, you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to us there and we're more than happy to help. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, John, Jake, you guys, thank you very much. We have, I think, time for one last little question if anybody has one, but otherwise we will wrap it up. Okay. Well, folks, thank you very much for joining us tonight for this presentation. Uh, Jake and John, thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with our community. Hi, guys. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Good Absolutely. night. Good night, guys. Good night. All right. All right. I'm just trying to figure out how to find you on Facebook. I'm not really tech savvy. And I just want to find out before I leave. There was a, a you link guys. In, the, in the chat and you can click Is on There's a link in the chat? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll just save the chat. Yep. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks Absolutely. For joining us. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye,